How on earth is Esty Fenny a Gosford Gold Cup winner, Blake? <laughs> Welcome to the weigh-in. That's, that's irked me because he couldn't win a low race at Brisbane after some good runs in Doombin Cups, Q22s, and now he's knocked us off in a Gosford Cup. Well, if you probably asked us both 12 months ago if he was good enough to win a Gosford Cup, we probably both would have said yes. Yeah. Because we were back, well, yeah, yeah. We've backed him in a few races. Well, I know yeah. personally I've backed him I have. and you've said you've backed him. Yep. Um, and he's raced in, in that company for a fair, way, fair mm-hmm. while, so I don't know. It, you just can't keep throwing good money after bad, but he had it in him. He did. He's just – he's one of those horses. He was in the sack file a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's gone. It, I, it's not a horse that – he. it doesn't worry me that he won it because – there was no chance in hell I was going to back him on Saturday. It's yeah. more the horses that I'm like, oh, I could have backed that horse. Had it in your numbers. You know, like, I could have had it in the quaddy. That was the one that you just put the red pen through straight. Yeah, away. I wasn't. I wasn't too concerned. I didn't. I didn't look too much into him. Um, he just, yeah, he hasn't. He hasn't produced his best for a long time. So, um, yeah, pen job for me. But yep. too good. Yeah, it was a good ride too. Yeah. Um, rode for luck. He was mm. a thirty-one chance. He, he went back and and. Everything worked out for him. Got the run along the sort of towards the inside, which is probably not the best part of the track as well. So, he's yeah, I thought that, but then sort of go back and watch a couple of them, like Flag of Honor. He came back up the inside late in the day. Clem- yeah, I think he was Clemenso too good. Though. Was stiff, but he made up some good ground late on the fence. <sighs> well, there's a few that. Oh, the, yeah, the fence was like I'm. Not, I'm not saying it was off, but I don't think it was the superior no, going. Probably not. Yep. Um. Think about it. Uh, he resumed as yeah, a, good a horse. Nice, he's a, nice he's a good horse. He just keeps raising the bar. Did you make it your lay of the day? I did. Yeah, and I was oh, like, I was happy to be against it too. I we keep talking about the Stradbroke. He's Stradbroke favourite. I can't have him. Maybe he's, like I, I'm, I'm not going to say I can't have him. It depends what price he is. I made him the lay of the day because he was favourite. Three dollars in the morning, and he started four dollars twenty or four dollars forty. Yeah. So that's. Like I'm still like I think that I got it right. So if you're I would have laid him. I would have been laying him at three dollars, but yeah. then at four forty, he's just bet reeling back. things in. You know, you would have been pressing the pink button on Betfair early in the morning, and yeah, that's right. Yep. I don't know whether I wanted to back him late, but mm. it would have been a smart play. But yep. Clemenso, we, we were on him um, four dollars eighty on the Friday. I think we ended up four forty after deductions, and he was a massive go. They they were still wanting to take three dollars on Betfair late in betting. So yeah, um, big go on him. He had absolutely. Absolutely no luck, but we'll get to him uh, later in the show. But we will. Uh, what else? Palmetto. Yeah, good horse. Won the coast. Yeah, I cool can't horse. remember what has won the previous editions of the time honoured. Uh, I think the, um, the horse of Chris Lee's uh, won it last Steel. year. Rustic Steel right. won it last year, and the the ill fated horse uh, that went pretty good. He might have run. Rachel King used to ride him. I think John Sargent had him, and uh, he ran well in a Doncaster. Potentially, mm-hmm. or an Epsom. Um, yeah. I'll find it. I did remember hearing that it was John Sargent's second win in the race with Palmetto. Yeah, well, I think, uh, yeah, he won the first one. Oh, Brandenburg. Brandenburg, yeah, yeah. that's him. He yeah. came right down the outside. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. He, he broke down. He did. And he died. Yes. Yeah, unfortunately. Yes. But he did go good because I think he might have run. Yeah, I think he ran about fourth or fifth, fifth or sixth in yeah. a Doncaster. And I reckon Zaki's like first Doom and Cup where he won by seven or eight. Brandenburg led up that field that day and was there in the finish. He was yeah. a good horse. Yeah, yeah, he was, yeah. He was a nice horse. Well, I backed him a few times. Brandenburg, they did go from a coast to a Doom and Cup. Could Palmetto do the same? Yeah, no doubt. I think he can. Good. I think he's just on the, that nice up, upward spiral. Upward trajectory. Yeah, 100%. We, we run him in a 1600 first up. Um, it was a strong race, yeah. like midweek race, and he covered extra ground and he loomed and he peaked. And then he came out and bolted in at Hawkesbury back in trip. And then 1600, it, like, he was just powerful on the line as well. Mm. So, like, I think he, he's... He's winning over 1,600 metres, but he, he's seemingly looking for further as well. So Yeah. Well, I hope you're right. Yep. Yep. Jim Cup. We'll see him there. It's a different challenge. Wait for Definitely. age, of course, yeah. you know, against older horses. And he's going to run into a horse like a seasoned campaigner like Zaki. But I'm excited Same to owners, see him. I think. Sorry? Same owners. The, Is it? The Royal Blue with the Red V. Yeah. They go yeah, good. Lost true, and yeah. running. Yeah, they've got a good few horses. Yeah. Lost and running. You've got to get him back on track. But yeah. um, he's a good horse. He is. I think they're busting him up now. Yeah. 
He just went too hard. Tom he's, Marklin. Just, he's probably the one. He's the one that got away. If you, if you were listing horses, if it's not over yet. It's not, but like he, he might. Oh, I mean, hard to say because now Giga Kicks come out of that Everest last year and gone on to prove himself as maybe the world's best sprinter. Well, he was going to start much shorter in the market that yeah, Everest day. They, I was the on market him. was going to come for him, and they yeah. stretched him on on the morning of, and then yep. he went on to win one of those pop up races. I think like the Hunter or something like that. Is that the same year though? Winners was that the year before? The year before, I think. Well, you, yeah, maybe he started favourite in, in the uh, in the Nature Strip, and Private Eye finished right over the top of him. Uh, he was no good. Yeah, okay. He was favourite. Well, maybe you're right. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'll have to look into that, but mm. but yeah, stiff. Uh, Sunshine Coast meeting, yeah. Gold Coast Guineas, Watch some of that. Zaki won his third straight Hollandale. First horse to do it. Ten million dollar man, as Mitch Menner said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. He's a very good horse. He's a good horse. Uh, Yellow Brick. Yellow Brick, yeah, Pretty that was deep. an outstanding win. It was a very good win. Yeah, uh, I'm we'll excited get... to see him in the Stradbroke. He's got to win one more time to get in or something. Yeah, like I think that, so. They'll go to the Fred Best Classic next. Uh, they run first or second get in or something like that? Just first gets in. First. I would reckon but he Maybe would... it tips him over anyway yeah. if he runs second. Who I knows? would reckon so. It's a bit – it's it's hard to – he's unlucky if he doesn't get in because, of course, he was very unlucky not to win that Magic Millions guineas on the back of a King of the Mountain win. Oh, yeah. Pop-up race. He was and, unlucky, though. Yeah. And did you watch Fashion Legend on the weekend? I didn't um, no, I take didn't. too much notice of no. him. Um, I think he got a fair way back, didn't he? Not sure. No. I didn't take too much notice. Yeah. Um, first up crush for Yellow Brick, as Mitch Manor said. Yeah, first call. up crush, yeah. It was a good first win. up crush. Yeah, I just think he's he's probably a horse that um that's going to come out. Well, he's come mm. out of that Magic Millions guineas. Like, I, I feel like the format of that race is not going to be... Put up in lights outside of him, really. I think he's the no. horse that is – he's just different gravy. I think you're he's, right. He's a pretty good one. He is, yeah. Um, I was keen to be against him on Saturday, just being first up and not the, knowing. The market loved him. They did, yeah. Yep. It was, it was really him solid. a good horse. And yep. And one accordingly. Well yep. Yeah. Should have listened to Ben Thompson when we had him, had him on our podcast a Say couple of weeks Say Yellow Brick ago. was the horse to follow. Well, he, he's been on it all the way and – yeah, he said that it's oh, a very, yeah. very good horse. Well, listen, sometimes you've got to listen to these smart Sometimes. People. Some of them aren't that good a judge, but... Yeah, it's true. Think ben, but he's, he's done well. He's, he's tipped you a couple of winners. Didn't he, he tip you a good thing on the Saturday or something? Yeah, some... I forget what it was. Chinny Boom got beat. Oh. It was <laughs> twenty two, wasn't it? No good. <laughs> no, nah, yeah, he's... So like, he Moff Ben Thompson. Yeah. Um, and the other feature there at the Sunshine Coast, Renaissance Woman. Yeah, it was a good win. Good win. Good Second win. up... Quickly to 1,800 metres yeah. or whatever it was mm. and got back and stormed over the top of them. So, yep. yep, very hard to beat in the Oaks, I reckon. Good luck beating her in the Oaks. You're yeah, right. I, I, I would like she's – Bjorn's done a good job with her because he's yeah. held her back probably um, – well, as it turned out, um, that Australian Oaks didn't really turn out to be a, a proper form race no. outside of the winner. Um, but – this carnival is probably a, a length or two behind that again. Yep. So, um, yep, well placed by that's Bjorn, right. and hopefully still a group one on the page. Isn't yeah, that's that right. Get a group one Bjorn, and then and take it to Brisbane, and or take it to Melbourne, and Caulfield Cup campaign or something like that. Why not? A bit of fun. Hilda will enjoy that. I reckon he would. Would he? <laughs> yeah. I reckon he'll enjoy Queensland Oaks first. Uh, we might have to get him down here while. Yeah, he's that's up right. Here. We'll definitely get we him will. down. We'll go to. Um, we might go to Moo Moo's uh, Moo -Moo. Uh, Broad Beach. Yeah, you can come. Looking forward to the Moo Moo's debut. Moo Moo's is good. I've yeah, heard some Moo Moo stories. Have you? Just from, just from you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Moo Moo's is a good spot. Yeah. Um, well, what do you want to talk about first, mate? Do you yeah, want to um, get stuck into the horses to follow from the weekend or is there a bit more that you want to chat about? No, no, let's get stuck in. Let's um, get stuck in. Rightio. You can make your way up to the big screen. We've got we to gotta hit record on the... So there was big 10 races there. At, uh, at Gosford. So Blake's found three horses out of the Gosford meeting to follow and I'm going to highlight one from the Sunshine Coast meeting in a little bit. Uh, the two-year-olds kicked off the off proceedings there at, at the at Gosford. Uh, just trying to remember who won that race. Christ A. Orr with a little bit of Brisbane form. He's uh, won a few races in Queensland. Um, a few others were good. A little bit disappointing, I thought, uh, a couple from the back, Methuselah. Chris Wallace sort of highlighted as a 
as a JJ Atkins horse. Um, Snapback, he was pretty solid in the market. He's ended up running third once we uh, sort out technical difficulties here. BJ's going to talk us through Snapback, but this is a horse started favourite, really solid favourite on debut. Uh, Lazago nailed him late. Uh, and he was going to go to Queensland for a Magic Millions, wasn't he, Blake? But he didn't quite get there. Uh, he just has absolutely no luck in the run home. But when he does find clear galloping room, he actually gets stopped twice in the run. Um, so just there he goes for a run, gets shut out, and then he goes ducked back inside and he gets shut out again. Just there, and he's nearly stopped on his tracks. He gets out, and he produces the second best last 200 metres of the race. You can just see he's worked through the line. It's really strong. Um, I reckon he can go to Queensland and win a race very soon. Any others out of that race? At Matusalem, he was, he was good from the back, but we didn't really know how the track was going to play at that point of the day. Yeah, the winner really strong. I think Matusalem um, probably looking for a mile now, so he might be a horse that's going to be better suited over further. But... Yeah, I want to be with Snapback the the next wherever he goes next. Uh, this is Clemenceau. About Clemenceau. Four okay, five. yeah, got him there. Clemenceau. This is in the takeover target. So he was freshened up. I think he was forty two days between runs here, and Colt made a mistake. He, he drew uh, like sort of midfield, and he went back to the fence when he was a little bit slow to begin, and. He was just held up at a crucial stage. You can see Think It Over. He started his run, built some momentum into the corner. Clemenceau just had absolutely no luck. He had to duck back to the fence. He had no momentum, found the line okay. Uh, the market loved him, as I said but before. He was like four twenty into $3. And I think wherever he goes next, he can be really hard to beat. The other one that you want to follow out of the last race, it was Mars Mission in the, in the dark green silks, back third to last. So he was good late. Yeah, this is another horse that was freshened up into this meeting. He was well supported late in betting as well. He was eight into about six dollars fifty. You can see he gets back here. Gosford isn't really a track that suits him, uh, and he was never really in clear galloping room. You can see here he sort of uh, doesn't have clear galloping room there, and then he gets to the outside. He gets one gets one cut with the stick and. He's still not in clear galloping room, but when he does get out, he still produces the fourth best last 200 metres of the day. You can see his work through the lines really good. Um, I think he's probably going to be winning a, a Saturday race in, in the off-season now, so yep. uh, we can follow him into the future. What did you make of Robostro out of that race? He's been one, that, one of mine for a little while, and he kind of... Always promises a bit, but doesn't quite get there. But I thought he was good. Yeah, he was fresh. Um, he was fresh here, and he, he found the line nicely. Probably going to be better suited up in trip. Uh, Wallow will have a racing line for him for sure. Lovely. We're going to swap spots. There's one that I want to highlight out of the Sunshine Coast meeting. Uh, Suze, mate. Yeah, uh, you showed me the replay of this horse before, and it, it went really nicely getting home. So. Um, I'm not sure of the sectionals of the day, but I'll, I'll leave it over to you. Yeah, so obviously he's back here third last. He was first up at 1,200 metres. He, he strung a few together last prep and then he, he culminated in that Magic Millions guineas. But he's wide, doesn't have a great deal of cover. He's got a bit of a card in from Swiss Exile. You've got Yellow Brick who obviously he does the, the hard way. So all credit the winner, but uh, I really like the way he got home here. Fastest last 200 of the meeting. Uh, so the race was set up for him to do that, but he was nice and fresh. He'll go to, I'd imagine, a Fred Best where he, he's going to have to tackle Yellow Brick and whatnot again. But then on Stradbroke Day, there's the Gunsynd Classic over the mile at Eagle Farm. Kiss someone on the race last year, similar sort of profile. He'll be winning that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm going to put him in my black book for sure. Yeah, he'll win that Gunsynd Classic. Yeah, well, let's, let's back him. Let's That's back fine. him accordingly. I would like a futures market if there's anyone out there that wants to... Put a guns in classic yeah, market on, out. Come on, get these markets up. Well, I agree. I, I was looking for, I don't even remember what race it was, but about a week ago, I was looking for some race and mm. it wasn't out yet. I, I love it. JJ Atkins. It's out now. Yeah, I, I know it's out now. No prices, though. Uh, and, uh, no value. No, um, I, I think I wanted, oh, maybe I wanted it before the, like that horse, that $3 million horse won on Saturday, uh, last Wednesday. Candy and Did it abstract. come out before that? Uh, I don't know. I yeah, don't it did. It came out. It. They came out on the Tuesday. It raced on the Wednesday, and I think they went up fifty one dollars. And then the day of the race, it was fifteen dollars. Now it's eight dollars. Oh, definitely, I missed that. So. You missed the fifty ones. But yep. yeah, eight dollars looks a good price about him. Um, he's just the right, the right horse. 
Yeah, right time of year, isn't it? Definitely. Yep. Have you had a chance to look much at uh, at this weekend, mate? No. No? No. That's a good start. My boy goes around, Kovalika. I don't even know mm. where they're racing in Sydney. Uh, I have a Kemba? feeling. I thought it was maybe back to Rose Hill. I could be wrong. I don't know. Or were they at Rose Hill last weekend? No. Uh, Oh, uh, it's not Kembla. No, it's Scone. It's a big two scone. Scone. I carnival. knew it was. I thought I was thinking yeah. it might have been Kembla, but yeah, Great Scone carnival. is correct. Yeah, because yeah, you got the Scone Cup on Friday. That's going to be cracking. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, great races. Yeah. You got the Dark Jewel. Um, the Luskin Star Stakes. In Secret won the Woodlands last year. I don't know. Like Clemenceau could end up in a Luskin Star. St- well, he's not there, but. <laughs> 1,300 metres black tyre, that would be sort of his race. Mm. Um, but I'll have to go through those nominations. Um, We've got a one black booker there, White Ha Ha Fourth, which we did say, Luskin Star Stakes. Did we? There he is, nominated right down the bottom. 1,300 metres, that's that's his go. What price are we looking at here? Well, just have they got markets out already? Yeah. Uh, and then you've got Hortensia Stakes. Oh, he's $4.50 favourite, White Ha Ha Falls. Okay. Bet up. Interesting. Uh, one of our trial stars, Quantico. He's in the uh, Hortensia. There's a lot of black type racing there. Yeah. This this meeting uh, unveiled in secret last year. I just said that. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> there was another good one. Uh, Trekking, I think he came out of one of these races before he won the Stradbroke. Yep. Um, another one did the same thing. but I forget what horse it was. But, yeah. You're right, in secret. She did win this race last year. Dipsy Doodle lines up in the same colours in the same yeah, race. Yeah, interesting. Mm. Interesting. I'm excited to have a look at that meeting. But, no, I haven't really had a look at it yet. And, um, yes, we will be finding plenty of winners. We will. Doom Opal of Ridge, one of yours is in there. I've sacked her. In the Hortensia. I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be jumping off yet. Not yet. Well, she's close. Yeah, okay. I haven't sacked her as near as much as what I sacked Esty Fenny. Yeah, well, he's gone. Rightly so. But maybe bring him back. I yeah. might want to bring him back now. Eight-year-old? Well, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Doom and 10,000 this weekend too, mate. Yeah, that's going to be kick. good. Did I just kick. had a look. If he wins on Saturday, it'll, he will average $959,000 per start in his 10-start career. Yeah, well... Um, imagine any, owning one that averages a million dollars prize money a race. Oh, imagine owning one that averaged 50000 a race. Yeah, Close. but... <laughs> I'm daring to dream. Yeah. A million dollars a race, that'd be nice. I'd run, want to run him every second week. Yeah. 26, 26 million a year, that'd be nice. That would be all right. Yeah. I well, would. I guess that maybe, that's, maybe that, that's why we don't own one that good. That's why we're on this couch. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Not, uh, what's the name of the bloke that, that owns them? I don't know. Uh, Pine Cliff Racing. Can't think of his name. No. Clayton's placed him well anyway. He has. Yep. That'll He's be a good the race. the right races for him. Good He's kick. ticked the 1,400-metre box now. Um, yep, interested to see what they do with him next year. I know that the Everest is going to be – or the Everest is going to be number one goal. I think he's but, been yeah. locked in for a slot in the Everest now yes. too. Yes, yes. Yeah, same um, – it's James, James Harron. Mm. Yeah, James Harron bloodstock. Why wouldn't you lock him in again? I would be. Yep. Well, good luck to him. Um, I'm excited to see the races this weekend, but we'll mm. get stuck into them later in the week. And um, – Thanks for watching, punters. Yeah, thanks for tuning in as always. Uh, hopefully a few horses to follow that come out and win. Definitely. Have yep. a great day and week. Yes. Cheers.